So, Interstellar happened. The biggest science movie since Gravity. And it got a lot of people talking about the possibility of living on other planets. Because every Thanksgiving time movie should be about settling and colonizing other places. My love has destiny in space. I'm covering Milky Ways. With my fume up on the highs. So without giving away any spoilers, the basic idea of the movie is that a blight on crops, sort of reminiscent of the Irish potato famine, along with giant dust bowl-like conditions, makes planet Earth uninhabitable. And people have to start looking for a future someplace else. That concept has gotten people talking. Uh, planet Forward went to the Washington Post Feeding the Future Summit, and one of the speakers from USDA, Sunny Ramaswamy, admitted that government officials and scientists take these possibilities very seriously. It's not just science fiction. That's why this episode of Going Green with Devin Green is about laying out those possibilities. Let's start with the most far-fetched possibility. And unfortunately for fans of the film, that's the interstellar option. Wah, wah. The plot of the film revolves around the idea that we could find other habitable planets around stars outside of the Milky Way. Unfortunately, the closest star to us is 4.22 light years away, or 25 million million miles. If our fastest spacecraft, Voyager 1, took that journey, it would take about 80,000 years, or 1.4 trillion episodes of Two and a Half Men. And there are only 4 billion episodes of that terrible show. To fix this, Christopher Nolan used the plot device that a wormhole could be created in the galaxy. And a wormhole is basically a connection between two different parts of the galaxy, or a shortcut. Here's the rub, though. According to Neil deGrasse Tyson on his podcast, Star Talk, we don't have any wormholes near us, and you can't really create one out of nothing. So why is Christopher Nolan so obsessed with going to our nearest star? What's wrong with our star and our planet neighbors? Hmm? Our star has what's called a Goldilocks zone, where it's not too hot and it's not too cold. Problem is, Earth is the only hospitable rock in that zone. And like I said, creating a wormhole is impossible. Plus, who wants to leave the fate of Earth up to Matthew McConaughey? Yeah. Mr. McConaughey, you know how to operate this ship, right? My father says you're the best. Listen, Catwoman, can I call you Catwoman? No. Great, because I may get older, Catwoman, but these controls, they stay exactly the same. Bingo, bingo, bongo, all right, all right, all right. I don't even know what that means. What does meaning mean, you know? We're all going to die, aren't we? Oh, I mentioned I love my children. No! Now, I don't mean to be a Makana hater, but that option is off the table. The next option involves something called terraforming. And that basically means taking one of our planetary neighbors and recreating its atmosphere so human beings can live in it. And the best candidate for terraforming would be Mars. Mars has carbon dioxide on its surface in the form of ice, also known as dry ice. And if you heat that dry ice up, it'll rise into the atmosphere and create a more robust protective layer against solar radiation and all the other horrible, rude things the universe throws at you. It's getting hot on Mars, so take off all your clothes. Whatever happened to Nelly? <laughs> Oh, I sneezed in my spacesuit. Just like that, you've got an atmosphere. But that's just step one. In order to make Mars breathable, you need to bring in a bunch of green stuff that can photosynthesize and take some of that carbon we just burned out of the air and turn it into oxygen that people can breathe. Now, as mind-blowing as human beings breathing on Mars one day is, depending on how good terraforming gets, that could take at least 40,000 years. So at least as a short-term solution, that's off the table. Another closer option would be the moon. But who wants to live on the moon? You'd have to wear a spacesuit at all times or build some sort of space station dome to live in, which in theory you could just build on Earth, even if it was being ravaged by blights and plagues and all sorts of other Nolan-like disasters. Dream bandits, memory loss, the Joker, the Bane train. You think the moon is your friend? I was born on the moon! So basically that means we're stuck here. Which is why we need people like Sunny Ramaswamy over at USDA helping to prevent some of these disasters before they happen. 
And if they do happen, we need technical innovations to keep this planet, or at least pockets of it, habitable. Catwoman, stop acting like a cat. We gotta save the universe, my children.